I love the colorful clothes you wear and the way the sunlight plays. Connor, welcome, guys, and I will do the risk disclaimer as well. And Ben, welcome. Thank you for uh, joining us on Trade Talk. Thanks, mate. Uh, everyone, Ben's from Axi Trader, a brokerage uh, house in Australia, and he's kindly come on and to give a professional perspective of trading and. You know, just to add a bit of polish to our uh, presentation. Hey, Connor, how about that? <laughs> what po polish do I do? Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. And just before we get into it, Connor and I were just discussing the risk disclaimer. So everyone, please, just to understand, this is just for educational purposes. It's a little bit of entertainment. We're just explaining our journey as novice traders. And the setups we present here are just for, you know, general advice. We're not telling you to get into a trade. We're not providing a signal service or anything. So please, if you're looking for professional, you know, assistance and advice, seek the help of professionals. Maybe people from Axie Trader, as an example. I'm not paid to say that either, just to you know clarify. So Ben's just kindly taking time out of his day to come on. But please be very careful with Forex because you can lose a lot of money very quickly, and you've got to be very smart about risk management. All right, guys. So that's out of the way. Connor, I've got the pound Aussie dollar trade up. Um, and I've got the entry here. What, how are you feeling about things? What's your thoughts on the position? I'm currently I'm currently eating shit, Scotty. That's how I feel. Look, um, I mean, fair. That it was gone really. Did you? So you didn't? You weren't tempted to move to break even on this position at all when it no, went up no. on Friday? No, I wouldn't have moved. I would have moved uh, to break even at 1.7564. I've got, and it didn't go anywhere near there. So it's currently going down. I got in at one point. 736 and uh, it's taken a bit of a turn but you know I'm not not overly worried uh, I'll just see how it how it pans out you look fair Cole Connor and you don't have anything else you're looking at either on the charts right now not at the moment Scotty no, no. Uh, I'm yeah the the trending markets aren't really showing much and you're fully loaded and you're fully loaded at two percent on this so what's the yes. okay yeah, all right yeah. okay so it's either you've got to get to the first target and then move to break even or break even. or it hits the stop and loss somewhere. Past, yeah, yeah, otherwise, yeah. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for that, Connor. Now, Ben, I've got your US yen chart up on the 15 minute. Please just introduce right. the system. Sure, sure. So, I mean, look, obviously, you know, to, it's really trading reversals is sort of what, what I'm all about. So, um, you know, I guess ideally I like to try and catch, um, you know, the, the top or the bottom of the market. I mean, everyone does, but mm. I, really my system is, um, I guess, looking at sort of three drives, if you like. So yep. if you look at that US yen chart you got up there, um, you can see at the beginning of that trend line, the market sort of drives up um, and then, you know, it comes back down, hit, hits a second low, um, you know. Yeah, it did. First low. Yep. Um, comes up again and actually forms a double top there nicely. So you can see there's a nice sort of level of um, yeah of resistance there. Um, and so what what I found tend to happen in the market is is on this third drive down lower. Um, yeah. You can see yeah. that it's it's lined up perfectly on that trend line. So it's a third third drive down and then you see a push back up. So I guess in my trading I'm really only looking for anywhere between 20 and 30 pips. So not a huge amount. Um, of movement, I guess, compared to what you guys are aiming for. Yeah. Um, yep. But you can see with this, like on that third drive there, that it hits that trend line. Um, that dotted line at the bottom there is the 110.5, I think, from memory. Yeah, it is. Yep. Um, yep. Which is, you know, sort of a big figure number for any exchange rate, the, the whole round numbers or the half numbers as well. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, this, I liked this because it was sort of three factors that, that got me into this trade. It was the, the third drive down, the third leg down, if you like. On, yep, yep. Um, it was the big figure number as well that provides some support. And then on that, um, you can see there's a Fibonacci level. There. Yeah, I, yep. The 161.8 is that one at the bottom, which is an extension from that. Um, you can see where it's drawn um, on that sort of second drive there. Yep. Um, the 161.8 extension down to that point. So I guess it was, you know, th three factors there that, that got me into that trade. Um, and, you know, it, it moved sort of fairly significantly, 190 pips, I think it was in the end. Um, it did, yeah. <laughs> it was pretty uh, sweet. 
that was, that was one of my setups. And I had another example there as well, just on the Aussie dollar. Um, yep. Which I thought I'd show just because this is just from today, a trade I took today. Um, oh, yeah, I see that. That's, yeah. Yep, I see so that now. On, so it's on the reverse side now. So on the on the top side, looking for a short with that three drive principle again. Yep. Um, and there's a big figure there as well. So it's, it's driven right up to the 75 um, level. Uh, yeah, it has. See that on on yeah on the on the right hand side there. Yep. Um, so that was just a, a sort of two factor trade, if you like. I always have to have at least two factors on when I'm entering a trade. Um, yep. So the third drive there again, and and the big figure was enough for me to hit a short. Um, and I, I think I took um, only 20 tips off that. Um, so yeah, I mean those are a couple of trades. As I said, you know, I, I trade similar to you guys in that it's naked price action. Yeah. Yep. But. You know, I guess different in the sense that I'm trading on a shorter time frame. You know, I'm in front of the screens maybe a little more than you guys are. Um, you know, obviously I should say as well, I'm not, I'm no professional trader either. Um, you know, I'm as a novice as much as you guys are. But um, so, yeah. what's the the highest time frame that you dabble in? Is it the one hour charts? Is that as high as you would go? Well, it's the same trade. I've just zoomed in there. Um, yeah. Yep. And those three arrows that I've got there, I don't know if you guys have looked at the sort of chart that much, but it was a pretty strong sort of head and shoulders there as well. Yeah, yeah, it was. Now I, um... The first arrow is the shoulder. The second one at the top there is, is the head. And the third is a, another shoulder. Yep. And so when you draw a line there, that trend line that's there, um, but it breaks that sort of neck neckline is what we call it. Yeah. That's sort of a signal for an entry there as well. So um, that was just a third confirmation for me of where the trade was heading. No, look, I get that actually. I for me, I've just sort of, I see a lot of activity does go on on the uh, the shorter time frame. So the teachings we've had, obviously, with Walter Peters, we I just never look at this. But I mean, I I haven't even. And normally, what he tells us is don't even you know Mondays. You know, there's nothing really going on, so we don't really look at the charts on Mondays. And then Tuesday things start unfolding, but Connor and I are both the more trending type traders. But when it comes to opportunities, you sort of make a good point that a lot of currencies are really range bound. I mean, the Aussie dollar, it, it, it never really breaks, you know, a hundred pips in a day. It's very like regimented. It's very like it yeah. gets to 75 and, you know, as you can see, it's very, it's pretty predictable when it comes to, uh, and you got that double tap where that second, that third arrow is, um, on your Aussie 30 minute chart there and it played, you know, very consistent with what you were expecting, which is great. Yeah. I mean, you know, and it doesn't always work out. That's the reality of trading, but yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. You, you, you sort of, you've got to set yourself up for prob probabilities and, and that sort of thing. So you know, that's what I've tried to do there. And uh, you know, it, it's luckily worked out for me. So, so um, Ben, sorry. So Ben, what's your win rate on this sort of system? So you, you dropped out a little bit there, Connor. What was that? Oh, sorry. What's your win rate for this system? Oh gosh. Um, I mean, it's, you know, it's hard, hard to sort of say. I mean, in terms of successful trades, um, you know, it'd be sort of in the at least to the seventy percent. But mm. I was reading an article the other day that you know it doesn't matter how many successful trades you have if you haven't got good risk risk management the reality is that most retail traders lose money and that's not necessarily because they get trades wrong more often than not um but rather that they don't have you know good risk management and they'll <clears throat> it's so much easier to, to take profits when they're um there in a small way and and let your losses run hoping that they're going to come back um so one bad trade can you know obviously put you in a in a very bad place um Whereas you might be actually trading quite well overall in terms of successful trades, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So what what percentage um, did you use here, Ben? As well, for the, I've got your Aussie one hour chart up yeah. with the what what was the percentage that you risk? Like, what's your comfort level when it comes to that? <laughs> um, yeah, I, I sort of don't do it in, in terms of percentages, uh, unfortunately. I think I should, and I've, that's something I've been wanting to work on a little bit actually. Yeah. Um, I just sort of have a, a, a dollar amount tolerance. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. I, I just look at my um, so my stop loss on this. You can't see it, but it was just, it was just, it was a double top, just about yep. the seventy five level. Yeah. Can't see it on this chart, but you might be able to see it on yours. Um, so my stop loss was above that. I think it was twenty five pips or something. Um, so 
yeah, really, you know, I'm just sort of winging it a bit, if you like, when it comes to that at the moment. Um, but, you know, trying to let those, those, um, those profits run as much as possible. Yeah, I see. I see how you played it there. So you've got, I've got the four hour chart up on the Aussie dollar and I can oh, see, I yeah, yeah, I can roughly yeah. see, yeah, 25 pips above your entry yeah. of around 70. Yeah, I see how, I guess, yeah, like you, it's quite predictable because that's a nice little spot for resistance as well. And like you said, you know, as long as you've got your risk and what would you target? So if you risk 25 pips, what yeah. would you sort of aim for? Well, you know, because it's day trading, I tend to usually just have a one-to-one. Um, yep, yep. So uh, I normally, uh, yeah, aim for, yeah, a, a one-to-one sort of risk ratio, ratio on that. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Oh, I'm just checking the time. We're just over 10 minutes. Um, ben, what, what would you say to a trader who is just learning about Forex, has watched the videos a few times that Connor and I put up, what would you say, you know, what, what are the three pieces of advice that you, you've sort of learned in your time so far? Yeah, gosh. Um, I mean, I think for myself, when the, the moment I jumped from, uh, I mean, and this is going to be contrary a little bit to what you guys say, but I think the moment I jumped from a demo to a live account, um, my learning went, <laughs> you know, sort of exponentially increased, um, you know, when there's some real money on the line. Uh, and that's not to say I would never suggest jumping in before you're ready. Um, you need yeah, to understand yep. what you're doing. Um, but, you know, I guess the moment I did jump in and started trading in a live environment, um, it, there's just a lot more on the line. Well, that's what I found anyway. I found, I found it difficult to, to, you know, take a demo account seriously. I think the way you guys do it is really respectable. Um, I mean, that would be my first. But the same yeah. we've, we've lost too much day, money on the <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's true. Day, you yeah. need to find a, a system that, that is going to work for you. You need to find a signal for your trades, um, something that's going to trigger your, trigger your entries. Um, yep. And if you, if you can find something that's, that's good and that you trust and that's reliable, you know, at the end of the day, that's all you need. And do you only trade a few pairs or how do you sort yeah. of approach it? Yeah, just major pairs mostly. So it's and major way. pairs. Yeah. Is, yep. When nice. Was, uh, I tend to flirt a little bit with the indices as well, but I always lose money, so I stay away from them now. <laughs> oh, excellent. Well, Ben, I'm sorry we, we, we only had a short time here, but we do try and make it short. I really appreciate it. Connor, as always, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks, Scotty. And gentlemen, thank you very much. And until next time, guys, happy trading and thanks for watching. Bye.